to to Instagram. So uh, people who are listening to me now on Instagram, uh, technicalities, uh, there's a update needed for in order for Florian to join us on Instagram. Meanwhile, we are live at Facebook. You go, if you go to my Facebook page, which is also greenlight.joao.pombeiro, it's exactly the same address uh, as it is here on Instagram and find us there, okay? Meanwhile, uh, I will keep this audio and uh, if it's possible, any moment later for Florian to join us on Instagram, I will invite him and you will be here sharing the screen with me. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Florian is uh, sharing the screen with me on uh, on Facebook. At least I hope I is because uh, the it seems like this platform, this software is showing that uh, we are now streaming. Uh, so Florian, the Flow Starter, let me first tell you, I really love that name. Flow <laughs> Starter you. really brings me something special and I can talk about it a little bit later also. And uh, thank you who are joining us from all over the world, uh, not only now in this live most of conversation, uh, but also possibly future uh, as an audio podcast that I'll be sharing the audio in the days to come. So this is the green light other choice, live talks and podcasts where we talk and we have uh, conversations about the human experience and about savoring life with more simplicity. And for today, we have a specific topic that is very special to me. Uh, all of the years in my life, I was like uh, a little bit struggling and resisting learning from this specific topic um, and is dealing with failure. So I talked with Florian and uh, we agreed upon this topic. And uh, I don't know, uh, is failure special to you? Uh, let, let me know your first thought and then I'll properly introduce you. I uh, failure is special to me. Um, I believe failure is the number one thing in the world that keeps people from achieving their goals. I believe more people are afraid of failing um, so they don't stand up and start trying or they stop trying. Because it's not okay, right. Yeah, matter, I I... Really, really important to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. So, uh, Florian has a, a very, for me, a very interesting uh, life track, uh, li very interesting experiences. Uh, for example, he, he studied, I didn't knew that about you, uh, Florian uh, studied uh, social uh, anthropology and also psychology, sociology, and uh, from there you moved on to... Um, as, I, as far as I remember, you moved on to a different life of experiences, working in hospitality, in tourism, and you also did volunteer uh, training and coaching uh, children uh, for the gymnastic association in uh, Austria. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I was a uh, first, and when I was younger, I was like a semi-professional athlete, like a gymnast. And mm -hmm. when I turned 19, I had the opportunity to go back to the club and started to train the children. It was basically, oh, um, I met my trainer six years later and he said, they say, of course, I can't say no. And I went there and I helped him teach the small ones. And he asked me to come again the week after. And when I got back, he didn't show up anymore. Mm. He, was, he, was, he was badly sick. And at that point, I had the choice, either I do the same thing that happened to me when I was young and leave the children on their own, or mm -hmm. I take care of them and support them and things happen. Mm. We, we, just had a little, right we just had a little slowdown. It, it was like, okay, really? Wow, what a moment. And uh, yeah, I mean, in that specific field in sports, uh, there's no big deal about dealing with failure, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's funny because I think a lot of those things, especially from sports, gymnastics and so, mm -hmm. made me the person I am today. Not in the sense of discipline and fighting for what you want and go striving for goals and growth. 
more than that, I realized mm. what distinguished me from the top performers of our country. And I was like, I was in a, it was in a, in a good league, but I did mm -hmm. not go all the way. And later on, when I became a, a trainer, I figured mm -hmm. that there's, there's something that is called a head case. And okay. it's, a, it's a very funny term because when I heard that term, I was like, oh my God, everything makes sense now. The head case is basically a, a concept or a label for a person that distinguishes the athlete from the average but good athlete, from the expert that has to surf every time mm -hmm. to the expert who is surfed only sometimes. Just a brief request. Uh, we, uh, I experienced um, a break in the sound. Uh, what, what is exactly the distinction, the, the distinction that you are talking about? Um, the distinction is um, a head case is a person that mm -hmm. can perform on a very high level, okay. but he's depending on some circumstances. So mm -hmm. a head case is a person that sometimes gets stuck in his head and he can't perform under any circumstance. He, ha he is, let's say, if something happens on the outside, like failure or mm -hmm. a setback or something that makes him challenge himself, question himself, all these mm -hmm. things that keep him locked in his head and puts his state down. So he's not feeling, he's not in his genius zone because he's in his mind and arguing and why did you not do that and blah, blah, blah. So he takes too much time to get back in performance. Mm. And on the very mm. top, you can't have that. You need to perform under any circumstance, no matter what the outer things are. And mm -hmm. a head case is a person that sometimes takes a little bit longer to pick himself up, get back in shape and then perform again. So he has this fluctuation and that was me. Mm. And through all the training I did over the years, this is something what I tried to compensate. This is what I'm giving to people now, what I'm teaching people. How can you become from a head case to the absolute top performer who can perform under any circumstance, no matter what, on the outside? Okay, interesting, interesting. Uh, we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. Um, just to introduce and to remind our people that are joining now on Instagram, uh, we had a, 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 diff a difficult um, issue, a technicality issue with uh, updating one specific app. So uh, we are not able to uh, have the two screens and Florian on Instagram. So if you want to follow this on Instagram, I believe you are receiving the audio. Uh, if you are receiving audio, please send a check, send the okay. Everything is good with the audio. And uh, if there's an issue, just talk to me and back to you. Thank you very much. And we are live on Instagram, uh, sorry, on Facebook, uh, exactly at the same address, greenlight.joan.pombeiro, exactly the same address. Uh, we are live on uh, Facebook, and you can see both of our faces. And later on, we will, uh, uh, oh, people are saying the audio is okay. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, if you want to see the beautiful face of Florian, uh, please do join us on Facebook, my Facebook page, greenlight.joao.pombeiro. And um, uh, that reminds me, uh, I cut, uh, I cut uh, your presentation in half, uh, because after all that uh, track of experiences, you begin to, uh, I don't know, uh, you start interested in get more know yourself better to improve something or develop yourself in any way at all and you found coaching and uh, neuro-linguistic programming uh, which will shorten to NLP and uh, you found new code of NLP and uh, many more the last thing we spoke about was the uh, polyvagal uh, approach in dealing with uh, somatic experiences sometimes trauma sometimes a block that is between the person from expensive as the person wants and uh, first of all how was that experience and transition for you to get there and to start in this field as a performance coach <laughs> yeah this that was a big journey it was a very long journey actually it took me almost three years of my life to find out what i really want from I mean, people came to me when I was 15 years old, like huge guys that most people were afraid of. Like, you know, they, they kind of were fighting all the time and took my, my arm and uh, pulled me along in a dark 
small street, mm -hmm. and I said to myself, show no fear, show no fear. And he pulled me down on the floor, sat next to me, and he said, I, I've heard uh, I, you can talk to you so nicely. Maybe you have some recommendations for me. And this is how I met people back in the past. And I, I was really good. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> this is amazing. So uh, a, a big, big, like way bigger than you, will the, by the harm, uh, like sitting mm -hmm. you on the floor, asking you for advice and recommendation about you. And that's how I we met. <laughs> I had, I had that many times in my life and I was pretty good always in high school already. I was in a sport school to make mm -hmm. the first ones to the best. Like yeah. what, I, what I can do really well is provoke people to a point where they break their own limitations okay. in any way. So this is what, mm -hmm. I, what I was always doing. But when I mm -hmm. was 15, I started to work to support my mother financially and okay. the school for, so for psychotherapy. What I was really mm -hmm. interested in back then, it was super expensive. So that was like something mm -hmm. I wrote off my, my thing. Then um, I went to politics. I was in politics for eight years. I tried to change the world and all these things. Then I was in science for a little bit. And I figured this is also not my leverage. And it was too... Mm -hmm theoreticistic if this is an english term it's like when something is so theoretically so theoretic mm -hmm. that it will never be able to or to be able to apply it practically okay. and so i left that field too and i was really not in a good place when i figured i can mm -hmm. change the world the world is how it is and mm -hmm. i didn't know what to do with my life so i started traveling i was walking through asia southeast asia and china for eight months barefoot walking through the jungle, sleeping with monks in China and in Laos and found little villages. And I was around for a long time. I went to India for half a year, Mexico half a year. I was traveling for a few years. And this is where I started going into gastronomy because this is the best way to make money on the, on the road. Mm -hmm. um, but then my wife, my, back then was my girlfriend, now it's my wife. We figured we want something steady. The life we have is, is amazing, it's a dream, but it's not forever. If you want to have a family, this mm -hmm. is not how you have it. Um, I, by the way, I uploaded the Instagram to me. Oh, it's updated. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, because oh, we have more people joining us on Instagram. And uh, maybe if people now see us live on Instagram also, they will stick around. So if you're already updated, just sorry for this intermission, just a brief, <laughs> brief pause to connect Florian, uh, the, the visual of Florian on, on Instagram also. So send request and let's see if you have a request there to join also. How do I see I, you? I, I found a way of your audio uh, being streamed to, 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 yeah, to Instagram. So people were seeing me and hearing two voices. So can you imagine okay, that? Cool. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> let, 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 let's see if you can join us on Instagram also. Um, I don't have an invite. I don't see one. Uh, yeah, it's somehow still sending the invite. I don't mm. exactly. I it's if actually if saying, uh, standing by on Florian. So I don't know what's happening in the process, but something is in between, which is also interesting about the topic of this, um, of this talk about failure. Uh, some people might have seen or might see this as failure. How is it possible that they didn't anticipate, they didn't take care of things to, to see the visual coming in? Uh, yeah, I got uh, a notice that you couldn't join, but I don't know why or what happened. I, I don't know. I don't know. Either. Yeah, let, let's see if we can come back again. If not, we are perfectly con conducting and fluid on this conversation. So, and again, for everyone who might be uh, joining us on Instagram, uh, there's the technicality with the visuals on Florian, and we are live on my Facebook page, Greenlight um so help me understand this uh, i totally get the place that you are coming from uh, and I, I also it also resonates with me um 
in the sense of what I really want to impact in the in this world, what I really want to create and to contribute for. Uh, so, which in that sense, which is my direction, and I've been looking for those answers. I've been looking for uh, what makes sense for me now, and I've been having some. <laughs> <laughs> some things and some ups and downs. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm still on a down moment, or I'm still, or if I'm just picking up balance to to go up. Um, uh, help me with this. Uh, in all those moments, and when you look back now, do you have a, a sense of failure looking back? Okay, I think I need to first. I need to clarify. Uh, the terminology, what it means to me, so it makes okay. more sense to talk about it. So you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying when I use these terms. Um, mm -hmm. I believe failure happens when we stop trying. Mm -hmm. So I make a huge difference between have a setback, like fall mm -hmm. down, okay, love mm -hmm. about yourself, get back up, and go for it again. I believe mm -hmm. you only fail when you don't get back up, when you stay down, when you give up. This is for me failure. It's when mm -hmm. you stop trying. It's not that you fail once because mm -hmm. in order to learn, you need to make a lot of mistakes. And the more mistakes you make, the faster you learn the if you recover, if, mm -hmm. you don't, if you don't have the guilt part and make yourself smaller and all these things that people do usually. Um, it's funny to say that because I think most people say that, that you uh, you have to pick yourself up, you have to make mistakes, all these things. You hear it everywhere. But how you do it? Like, it's never yeah. easy to make mistakes. It's never easy to not fulfill our own expectations. It's actually mm -hmm. probably one of the hardest things there is. Because... Why is it so hard? I mean, what do we all grave for, even though we are grown ups and we don't say that out loud or we don't even agree, but we all want to be accepted. We all want to be respected. We all want to be loved and included. So, and this is something that, this is something inside us that we carry around since we're a child. Right. And so in let order me to just uh, take that in and uh, ask people that are watching us right now or are listening later on the, the, the podcast, if this somehow resonates with you, uh, just send a comment or share, share a, a private message, either with a thumbs up or saying, yes, this resonates with part of my life where I experienced that before. Uh, because I can uh, connect with that. I can connect with uh, moments where I want to be accepted, moments where I want to feel that I'm loved, um, or just feeling loved, to put it simply. And uh, for a long time, uh, it was it has been a process for me to disconnect from expectations, either from others or from my self expectations that I design myself. And in the sense of, um, and th th then it's when it started to get interesting for me. Because we, we start to see either layers or variables crossing and coming together. Because you mentioned guilt mm -hmm. and expectations and uh, what is right and wrong. Uh, just this afternoon, I had a follow-up uh, call with a, a coachee, uh, a woman that I'm helping. And uh, she already knows and has the conscious that uh, she, uh, she was brought up, she was educated, and she she grown up uh, in... Uh, I will, uh, in my words, I will say a strict family. She mentioned something like a rigid education or something like that. I don't remember the specific words. Um, and one pattern, uh, one way of thinking, one pattern of, uh, of talking uh, is that she puts things in either wrong or right, correct or incorrect. Uh, should I be doing this or that? Uh, what is supposed for me, uh, for me to do here? Um, and when we are talking about our life and our development and discovering what we want to do now or next, uh, we deal with those. I mean, I, I deal with those. People I help deal with those. And on one side, I see people that try to get rid of that, like they could eliminate the process of, uh, like you're saying, uh, stumbling, falling, and likely could eliminate uh, mistakes and failure and uh, setbacks and so on. And other people uh, don't 
don't do anything about it. And other people, they learn, they integrate the learnings and they move forward mm -hmm. with those learnings with uh, uh, more experience, um, mm -hmm. more knowledge or whatever. When I was listening to you, I, I was picturing in my mind how would life would be like for a soccer player, a football player, if uh, starting the match, he would uh, kick the, to, to, to try to score a goal, he would miss and he would give up. You will, you, will, you will not uh, touch the wall again, like for 89 minutes of the rest of the game. So what, um, what's that, yeah. right? And if you think about if we, when we were babies, if we didn't get up uh, when we were trying to, to walk, what will happen? <laughs> and then it, yeah. you, it seems like at some, point, some moment in life, that kind of fades away. So what, what, that, what the, does that bring you? I believe this is what I tried to say, like we come up with strategies and concepts and methods and whatsoever to mm -hmm. get the attention, love and respect and everything that we want so much that we mm -hmm. believe we have, we have to do in order to get that. So we mm -hmm. turn and twist and bend ourselves and become someone we think we might have to be to get what we want. And so um, yeah, one of the strategies is I need to be perfect. Oh wow, that's a strong one. Perfectionism is a very thing. It's a very crazy thing. I'm about to make a video um, about what's it called um, procrastination, mm -hmm. and it's so funny because most things you see online, if you look procrastination, most people would say it's on the other end of the spectrum of motivation. So it's, you just need to be mm -hmm. more motivated, then you don't procrastinate, no? I understand the field Bullshit. of the reason. Bullshit. In, in the least cases, who is the person that is most procrastinating? He's not the person that is not motivated, it's the person that is over-motivated. His expectations to himself are so high because in many cases, people say, my self-worth is directly uh, equivalent to my success or what I deliver or my performance or what you want to call it. So mm -hmm. as long as this equals this, we measure mm -hmm. our self-worth on our output. So we have to fucking deliver, otherwise we're worth nothing, but it's not perfect yet. It's not perfect yet. No, it's not, no, I don't, and so we procrastinate. Mm -hmm. Not because we are not motivated, but because we are over-motivated. And over -motivated. Over motivated. Over motivated. Yes. Okay. The yeah. expectations are too high, and because I mm -hmm. can't fulfill them, mm -hmm. I don't start. I keep uh, postponing, and uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this is and in most cases that I know the ca that, that's procrastination and perfectionism is is a huge thing. Yeah, uh, that pops up in my mind the 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 practice of the way that we bring up kids, uh, either in school, in daily uh, social interactions, uh, because it could be the neighbor that interacts with the, 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 the child and uh, brings that uh, assumption of uh, um, outcome and performance equals value and self-worth. Yeah. And of course that can also be brought up in the family, uh, by the teachers at the school, look at our school system as traditional as it is and uh, old fashioned, the thing um, is, from two centuries ago, that the focus in, is on um, evaluation as a number, and that number means X, and many times X, and the number is self-worth. And then these dynamics and these uh, uh, hidden patterns, I would say, sometimes are underlined and intertwined with our performance on a daily basis. And sometimes it's not the outside world, it's just what the, the child understands or interprets or makes up in its own mind mm -hmm. and this is what it's behaving for we create these uh ideal pictures of ourselves that mm -hmm. we try to follow through in order to get what we were saying before and yeah. then we want we have to be that picture in many cases we're not even aware of that picture that it exists and yeah. and i for example i did not have in my family or anywhere this kind of pressure I mm -hmm. made it to myself. Okay. I needed to be perfect to get that love. That that was my thing. Mm. So it's it's not always on the outside. It's not always the teachers, the families, and so on. It's the child mm -hmm. has very little limited resources, and it makes up things. 
and it doesn't have many strategies, so it, go, it goes with the first one. It says, okay, maybe I didn't get the love because I'm not as perfect as whatever, so I need to be more perfect. And boom, conclusion, and we act up on it. And we probably never question that till we get old. Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah, in that sense, I was talking about uh, the, 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 the common example for me, uh, or one example, it will be, uh, the child that uh, uh, gets a good grade uh, at a test at school and uh, it get, like gets congratulations oh my champion either for boys or my sweet princess for for uh, for girls and um, which is all a different segment of a different story and um, uh, they, they might get a, a gift a present because of that um, of that score of that grade and uh, they got, might get attention or a hug from whoever is special to them. And exactly like you said, because they they uh, they have limited resources, they are still learning uh, so much about the world and they cannot process and filter what is happening and what is uh, adequate and healthy and not, and that gets ingrained in their, in their behavior later on. Um, so with that and with the question of failing, uh, do you believe that we will change somehow our perception about failure if we will uh, start re referring to it more as an action, failing, experimenting, discovering, instead of the crystallized word, the, the nominalization mm -hmm. of failure? I think what that makes it makes a huge impact, like a big difference, mm -hmm. but it's just a cognitive one. And mm -hmm. in many cases, we know those things, mm -hmm. but we don't feel them. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to know and another thing to really understand, to feel it, to, to you know, live it. Mm -hmm. So you can say to yourself, there is no failure, there's only feedback. It sounds so beautiful. But that, that's a sentence that we, we hear a lot on personal development, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, no, no, but, no, there, there's no failure. There's only feedback. <laughs> but then on the end, the question is, do you really feel it? Do you act up mm -hmm. on it? Because we mm -hmm. know so many things. And most people that come to me to see me, they know basically sometimes more than I do. I work with super smart people and some of them read mm -hmm. every week a book. But it's one thing to know things and it's another thing to live them, to understand them, to have them integrated. And mm. I can know, for example, that failure is good because it's only feedback and I can know that I have to stand up, but there is strategies inside me and emotional responses. They don't listen to that voice. They don't believe you what yeah. they hear and they feel that way anyway. So there's a few different things I think we have to change in order to overcome that mm -hmm. sustainably. Yeah. So, so for example, for example, and the, what you are saying is to go a, a little bit to um, uh, 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 under layer and to go a little bit deeper to the structure that is beneath the superficial behaviors and talking and thinking and so on and so on. Uh, because we now know that we have... Uh, um, muscular and cellular memory and that there's a lot going on in our body and uh, i've witnessed uh, first of all with myself and then with people i help that sometimes i'm less aware and not paying so much attention less connected with my own body and my own experience and uh, just as you put it the are you feeling that failure is something going on uh, inside because um, it popped up in my mind I had a huge discovery uh, years ago. Uh, I had a really dirty internal representation about money. And I had no idea. Uh, because of things that I heard in the past, like money is filth, money is dirty. Because back in the 80s and the other years, um, the quality of the material of the of the bills and of the coins and so on and so on was less with less quality than today. And so, yeah, money was... A little bit of grease, or a little bit of this, or a little bit of that, but many things that I've heard before uh, stuck together uh, as an internal representation for money. And when I discovered this, I was like, "Okay, wow! Okay, first of all, I know that I can transform this, which is a good thing, and I'm really pleased and confident that um, and grateful that I have learned how to do that." 
and uh, as do as did you. Um, but what else is there eh? for failure, for example? What will be my internal representation of failure, and how does it translate into my body, into my movements, and to other dynamics that are going on? Mm. I mean, first I would say it's always the three levels you want to work on to make change mm. really fast and okay. sustainable, like long-term change. So it's, uh, for you, it's, the, will be? it's the frontal lobe, it's the cognitive part. Mm -hmm. So you want to do what we were just talking about, you find cognitive strategies to mm -hmm. reframe failure to feedback. You, you learn and understand that it's necessary to make mistakes, to learn and to grow and so on. This is the cognitive part. Okay. Uh, well, this is it's we, important. Could we give yeah. a specific example? Uh, what would be an example of reframing failure? Yeah, like it's feedback. This is okay. a reframing. Failure so, is feedback. So basics just information from the situation that I experienced and uh, I was expecting one result, but in the end I got a different result. So it's just information about how it happened. In that Put it sense? that way. Put it that way. Um, we can do a little exercise if you want. Okay. Yeah. Let's think do it. about you can if you want close your eyes and think about a moment mm -hmm. in your life where you really had failure. Okay. So I'm gonna invite our guests now and whoever is watching. If, if you you're want not driving a car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Please keep your keep safe. Keep uh, guarantee your safety and guarantee your your integral um, your physical integrity. Uh, so closing my eyes and imagining one moment that I have experienced, I felt failure. Failure. And okay. when you have that, when you have that moment, then go inside. Be fully okay. there in that moment. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you feel. How does it feel? Okay, uh, I feel um, a compression of my torso. Mm -hmm. I feel uh, I'm like shrinking. Mm -hmm. uh, with my shoulders going forward into the center, I I, I feel my head. It, it, it wants to bow more. It wants to go lower than this. I feel I feel like I'm dropping my shoulders, like uh, like I was um, whatever. I'm dropping so, my shoulders. Okay. Basically, basically, um, do you feel powerful and uh, in a learning state or in a state of yeah, I'm achieving great things now? Uh, not, not powerful, not really. and also not so, in a state of learning or taking something from the situation. So try one thing. Mm. Stay in that moment and just give it a different name and say, it's mm. a feedback. It's a learning. Mm -hmm. What can I learn from it? Mm -hmm. What's in it for me? What's it, what's this a chance for? Okay. So you just gave it a different name. How do you feel different now? Um, it's somehow I feel lighter. That's what yeah. That what uh, what comes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this was just the reframing of a word. Mm -hmm. okay. You can do the same thing. You can do the same thing with problem and go mm -hmm. inside that problem. And when you're there, then call it challenge. And just, just mm -hmm. it's the same thing, but it's a different angle, a different perspective. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. just, a, just a label, just a word changes our association to it. And basically, how we call things, how we label things, how they make us feel. Okay. If I say stress is negative and bad, it's going to be bad for me. If I say stress is cool and I love it and I need it to grow, it's going to be mm -hmm. good for me. And I love this example. One of my mentors brought, uh, Dr. Gunter Schmidt. He is the founder of Hypnosystemic Work. And mm -hmm. he said, um, some people they have panic attacks or like this kind of anxiety things and they come mm -hmm. to me and they say, please go make it go away. Make, do make it go away. And some of his friends say, I, I don't have this kind of panic feeling anymore, this anxiety thing. And I paid so mm -hmm. much for it. And now I need to look for something else. Bungee jumping, skydiving and so on. Some people pay for it and other people want to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. 
it's the same physical thing that happens, but it's how we associate to it, how we interpret it is how it makes us feel. I love this story. Like for example, say there's Vanessa and she got mm -hmm. brought up in a, in a family is very protected, conservative, is very calm. They never mm -hmm. do crazy things mm -hmm. and especially not really mm -hmm. sports. So when she's 17 years old, eventually she man she's on her own and she's maneuvering herself in a situation where she feels overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And all of, a, all of a sudden, she feels this kind of pressure here. She feels the heartbeat is going faster. She's breathing more up here. She feels her body getting hot. And she's like, mm -hmm. oh my God, this is stress. This is what people told me. It's so bad and it's negative. I heard it's, it's not good for you. It's, it's, it's unhealthy. And oh my God, it's breathing getting heavier. And oh my God, I have a panic attack. Mm -hmm. On the other side is Maria. Maria get brought up in a family where it is, let's say they're a little bit local. They're a bit crazy. They do crazy stuff. They travel around the world. They do sports, but they do it a bit more extreme than others. And they, they love risk to learn. Mm -hmm. So eventually she's getting 17 and she's on her own feet and she's for sure maneuvering herself in a situation where she feels overwhelmed. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, she feels her chest is, is starting to pound faster. The breath is coming up higher. The heart is racing. She feels the heat through her body. And she's like, yeah, yeah I love this energy. Mm -hmm. She feels the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. But how she interprets it is how it makes her feel. So when I say reframing is how you call the things is how they make you feel. Be aware of how you call things. Whether you mm -hmm. want to call it failure or learning or feedback or chance, if you want to call it problem or challenge, and mm -hmm. so on. Yeah. this is one uh, thing. Yeah, that's one thing. Uh, uh, what I'm curious about your your perspective uh, is this. Um, so first, yes, uh, there's that difference uh, that uh, I'm not sure if uh, one word is excitement and the other word I'm not sure if it's. Uh, extreme anxiety or what it is, but that uh, biochemical uh, level and with um, the neurological um, connections uh, that are um, activated, it's pretty much the same. The same biochemical uh, footprint and the same uh, neuro, uh, the neurological patterns that and the connections that are uh, fired up uh, for the for different words. Mm -hmm. for the excitement and for the anxiety, which is uh, close, uh, and, uh, as you were saying. So as I he was hearing you, some people might say, oh, yeah, but that's because she grew up with that kind of family and the other one grew up with that kind of family. So they will look outside for the source of that, the, the person's interpretation. And the... Uh, Sure, if I, if I, João, if I haven't learned before how to reframe it or how to see that one situation or one sensation can have different names and labels, I don't know it yet how to do it. I might not, not even know yet that it's possible to make that transformation and to have that other experience. Uh, so first, regarding this, the, the question is, uh, what could be uh, bridges to help the person get there? What could, be other, uh, um, what could be one other choice that Vanessa can make to make a move to do something about it? Mm -hmm. I think what I realized a while ago is mm. the presupposition mm -hmm. that something inside us is negative. Mm. actually states or means that there's an enemy inside us right like i have negative feelings like mm -hmm. this is a negative whatever everything i call negative inside myself is like why do i think there's something negative inside myself so the presupposition is to understand that everything inside you is there for a reason your organism is running smoothly or yeah, in the video Sorry, Florian. Yes. Just call you back in a few seconds. We had a break <laughs> in the video and the sound. So mm -hmm. just when you start explaining that uh, um, 
the person uh, values something inside as negative. Yeah. So basically what I'm saying is we have to say goodbye to these things that there's something inside us that is mm. bad for us. Our mm -hmm. system is running perfect. So our organism is responding to outside environmental mm -hmm. whatever and mm -hmm. is, is, is providing energy or anything that it thinks we need mm -hmm. to overcome the challenge. I believe so the first that. Thing, the first thing is to understand that everything inside us is there for a reason and it's actually good for us. So mm -hmm. it, it, it helps us. This understanding helps us to interpret those things in positive mm -hmm. terms. Because if I understand, oh, I'm actually my own, my own friend. Everything inside is, for, is there for me. Everything is there for a reason. It is already easier to say, oh, stress is maybe helpful. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's good for me because it helps me to expand my boundaries, to overcome mm -hmm. myself like athletes do it. Exactly. And, and on that and note, mm -hmm. just uh, allow me this. In that note, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, this is the way I believe it anyway, uh, we feel pressure. And the, the, the mindset, the frame, the interpretation that we uh, uh, give to that pressure, depending on the level, the intensity of the pressure that we feel, uh, can bring st a, st a state of stress. And then if it, if, if, it can, if it gets overwhelming, then we might be able to not function or not to cope or not do something about it. And then later on, uh, burnout might be a scenario. And... Uh, Relating with failure, there's also uh, my skills, the way that I perceive my ability to cope with what is happening, to cope with the pressure, to cope with the sense of failure, to cope with the setback, and so on and so on. So uh, there is also this happening, right? This dynamic uh, about uh, how do I feel and perceive my abilities? How do I feel and perceive the pressure? And as you were saying now, um, how do I perceive uh, this happening at this moment? So with all of this going on, um, and I, I also believe in the same that you, that you believe, we are perfect, uh, our organism, our body is uh, dealing perfectly with the environment and with everything that is going on. And when we value as negative or uh, um, harmful or... I, I, I feel uncomfortable with this. I don't like this feeling. I want to push it aside. Uh, yeah, that's usually when the problems start, right? That's usually when the inner struggles uh, start. Uh, just to, exactly that, yeah. And then just to, uh, to finish with this, uh, I usually, um, I do some uh, pro bono workshops. And one of the last ones, maybe three years ago, uh, was uh, for a, a senior university, uh, people that are already retired and to occupy their times, they go to learn something else. And so we had a moment to, to talk about feelings and about emotions. And um, uh, in the order to challenge and to provoke a little bit some reactions, I uh, brought up the difficult, the difficult emotions and specifically rage. When we feel anger, when we feel rage, usually, I don't know about people here, but uh, uh, you, you can also write a comment if you relate with this. Uh, people usually don't like the state of anger, of being angry, of being feeling rage. And uh, I, the, the, the ladies there present was like, oh no, rage is a bad thing. And I was like, yeah. So if someone was treating your child, your, um, your grandson, and uh, was doing this and this and that to, to him, or was threatening to do this and that to him, uh, you will be calm and peaceful and zen, right? <laughs> and they were like, no, no, I will get in the way, I will do anything. Huh, isn't that interesting? That, that mm -hmm. energy is useful somehow. Mm -hmm. And then I, I usually say also, uh, if rage had no positive intention, if rage was at all no useful, I guess the human evolution will have take care of that by now. Mm. We had lost uh, already anger and rage if it was not serving a purpose, if it was not contributing or being helpful somehow. 
And isn't that interesting that people tend to either forget, they don't learn about this, but they disconnect from this in their bodies, and then they value and judge as negative the things that they don't like so much or that are uncomfortable and so on and so on. And then uh, they sometimes see them themselves as failing because they are experiencing things that they don't like and don't want. Mm. Yeah, this is this is actually you're getting to the point where uh, where I wanted to go. I think there's a it's a two or three step process here. The first mm -hmm. thing is to understand cognitively that everything inside you is there for a reason. Mm. Then the second thing is to reframe the negative terms into the positive to give it a positive name. It already changes right. something inside you. And then the third step is to address that feeling that you just reframe and you allow mm -hmm. it and you just sit with it. And okay. you ask it what you want for me. Mm -hmm. And in some cases we see pictures, in some cases a voice is coming up and is saying, I just want that you are good. I just want that whatever. And things pop up when we dare to sit with those negative emotions. And in many cases also sometimes it just disappears because it just wanted to be heard mm -hmm. and felt. And this right. is this three step yeah. thing that everybody can take home. That is something mm -hmm. that you can easily do Anytime mm -hmm. and everywhere, and I, I promise if you if you practice this and you make it mm -hmm. a habit, it will become like like something you do. You don't think about it anymore. And all of a sudden, most of these is I say negative emotions, but they're not, uh, will mm -hmm. automatically fade or you overcome them more fast. Yeah. We have someone watching us. I'm just gonna quickly read um uh, and summarize, I will uh, paraphrase what the people are saying. Uh, don't react to the alerts of your body. I mean, the disconnection between the mind and the body due to the block of the mind uh, through, by the old things around. So if I'm under understanding it correctly, uh, the body-mind disconnection, when the, by the mind tries to uh, take over and we disconnect from the, the, the body sensations and the, the alerts, uh, it can contribute to that um, to that inner struggle, to that uh, dealing with the negative emotion in a way that is not quite healthy or useful or helpful somehow. And so, you, and you are proposing this three-step uh, practice. Uh, can you uh, repeat so we can uh, end to our closure of our talk? Uh, can mm -hmm. you repeat that practice? So the first thing is to understand, to make yourself aware that anything inside you, what happens, is there for mm -hmm. you. It's not always serving its purpose, mm -hmm. but it's it's a mechanism, a strategy that is unconscious, mm -hmm. uh, that that maybe started when you were a child. Right. So many of these many of these strategies of these things that come up for us. Mm -hmm. come up with positive intentions but they are with the resources of a child these things got created when we were very young and we didn't have any anything else at stake at, at hand so as as long as soon as we learn that anything that comes up whether it's helping or it's not mm -hmm. it's there for you it has a positive intention it wants it wants something for you so if you understand that you start already an understanding that nothing inside you is your enemy everything inside you is okay that helps to relax. Then you have a more calmer mind to address those things. And then you find, and you can even write lists of words, of reframing words. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, don't worry, because I'm saying worry, yeah. problem, difficult, mm. bad, all these things. You can actually write a list of all these things you usually use and reframe mm -hmm. them to something positive. And every time you think like, oh my God, I failed or I fucked up or whatever you want to call it, you say, ah, I have a chance to learn or I, I whatever it is for you that helps you, that reframes that word in a, in a more yeah, powerful it, form. It can be so many things, right? Oh, I, I still have something to learn. Uh, oh, this is uh, testing my abilities or this is inviting me to develop this skill. Or, oh, I guess I'm still discovering exactly mm. how to be able to do this or yes. experimenting and so on and so on. 
And that's the second thing. And if you mm -hmm. do that, and if you follow as a listener and you practice that at the same time as we are talking, you mm -hmm. will already feel a huge shift on the second step inside your system. Mm -hmm. That the feeling that was there before, maybe so strong already, maybe got way lighter and transformed mm -hmm. already. And now you can sit with it and you can welcome it and you can say, hey, just to yourself, welcome. You say, welcome to that feeling. I'm here for you now. What do you want from me? What can yeah. I do for you? And you will um, see that in, in most cases, then it already disappears or it shows you what it wants or what, what it brings it for you. Yeah. Because for me, uh, and we, I, I guess with this, we are closing with, with the golden key. Uh, that's when uh, one main difference that I've been discovering over the years in my personal experience and uh, helping others which is some people uh, don't um, want, this is uh, partly interpretation, partly ex uh, speculation. Um, they Sometimes people uh, show and say that they don't want to welcome, welcome that emotion that might be seen as negative because they associate that with uh, um, resigning, with giving up, with... Uh, uh, just letting it be without doing anything else. And the thing is that the process doesn't stop there. The process continues. Like you are uh, suggesting, and I also subscribe that, uh, ask inside of yourself, what do you want to show me? Uh, what are you here for? Uh, what are you trying to, what is the message in some, yeah. in some yeah. form? And then also act upon that. Yes. yes. Discover the learning. Uh, put the learning into practice. Do something different the next time. Uh, because sometimes people say, oh, no, welcoming it, but I'm going to now be anger or I'm not going to be like, oh, I failed again. Oh, all this stress, all this thing that is messing with me. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm not I sure think, it's your experience, like but I've been having that experience also as a coach and as a um, transformation facilitator. And then there's things to be to be done yet. Mm. Also what, mo what most people don't understand is that you can't mm. let go of what you didn't accept first. Mm -hmm. So a feeling you can't let go of anger if you don't first accept it. Mm -hmm. Because you can't let go of what you don't have. So in order to let go of it, you need to first let it in. Mm -hmm. And from there, you can, and this is even better because you don't need to let go. There's a lot mm -hmm. of really successful people in this world that use that energy of anger and direct it toward their goals and yeah. create power out of it. And just, just to what you said before is the opposite of flow is resistance. And mm -hmm. when we start resisting, Anything of what happens inside us is when mm -hmm. we start conflict. Because if I push against something inside me, mm -hmm. I'm using force, I'm using power, and I'm interfering in something that is flowing naturally. So the question is, how can I channel what is already there wow. and, and make something powerful out of it? Every emotion is nothing but energy. There is no positive emotions. There is no negative emotions. It's just energy. And as, as the sooner we understand that, the easier it will be for us to take on everything there is, slowly, slowly, step by step. And of mm -hmm. course, if it was so easy, then the both of us, we would be irrelevant in our jobs. It's not that easy. I'm not saying that everything is, yay. No, it's not. That's, that's the reason for what I'm doing, to help mm -hmm. people to go through that. But on the end, the outcome is once you and you accept what is, and you mm -hmm. really start to guide it and direct it, channel it, you have mm -hmm. so much more power, so much more potential because all the energy is flowing and you just get yeah. it out. Yeah. Um, one of the people I am uh, most grateful to have learned with, uh, Stephen Gilligan, uh, he has a, a phrase that goes something like um, a symptom is um, is a, is a is a, a body sensation is a is a, 
is uh, I, what's the word? I don't, and I'm forgetting the specific word that you used. But a, a symptom is something without human connection. Hmm. Without John, Grinder, human John Grinder said uh, uh, a symptom is a frozen signal. Exactly. In that sense. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like the, the body is working perfectly and is communicating. And it's, it's no one here, up here to pick up the call and to yeah, listen we, to the, body, to welcome the the sensation, to welcome that uh, flow that you were talking about. And uh, to bring us to a closure, just a, a, a brief sharing that someone commented also. Um, but failure is what give the, gives the man the chance to learn by the error. And that also remembered me John Grinder with his uh, kind of latest uh, definition of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Uh, about, uh, it's, not it's not experimenting, right? To discover what and how it works. What and it's, how to channel that uh, energy that you were talking about. Yeah, it's basically to become a child again and start seeing the world through the eyes of a child and start experimenting. There was one guy on TV, Niels, the, something, the Grice, or the, I don't know what is his name, Niels mm -hmm. de Grass Tyson or something. He said, mm -hmm. children are little scientists. They experiment every day. And if you can learn as a grown up to go back there, take mm -hmm. all you ever learned on your way to get grown up, and go back to become a child, but with all the knowledge that you have already acquired. I think this is what it really means to grow up, to go back and be able to wow. see the world through the eyes of a child, live like a child, yeah. but have all the resources, the potential and the mm -hmm. learnings with you. And then you see that you can fall and laugh and get back up and enjoy the process. Exactly, exactly, wow. So going back to be a child, continue that uh, experimenting, discovering, learning, adjusting to the world. And that's what is uh, be, uh, being a grown up or that is what is being um, uh, about growing up. Mm. Yeah, the, that, that, that sentence is like a pearl for us to, for us to close this, uh, this talk. Wow, uh, amazing. Amazing. Uh, well, before we go, um, thank you to who is still watching with us on uh, uh, Instagram, to the someone that might be there, and to my Facebook page, that to you that are here. Um, if you have any comments or questions, uh, please write them down either on a private chat or here on the comments of this video. And uh, you are free and feel, feel free to and uh, comfortable to reach out uh, to me at greenlight.joan.pombeiro. And please also uh, follow uh, Florian. Uh, and what is your address? Where, where, where can people find you? Where can people know more about what you do? Uh, you find me on LinkedIn uh, by Florian Hager, or you find my home or on Facebook Florian Hager or Flow Starter, and you find my homepage on flowstarter.de. .de. That's your website. Yeah, that, I really enjoyed your website. I really it was uh, very yeah, very good, very good. Yeah. And um, Florian, thank you very much for this uh, great, great talk. This great. Uh, it was like. Uh, I, I invite you to, uh, for me at least, it was, it felt uh, organic and fluid. We were navigating the way that the conversation was uh, drawing us to go in that direction or in that one. And also grateful because it popped up um, examples and memories and experiences in my, uh, of my life. And um, yeah, I, I have a, a sense of a little shift in some, uh, in some moments. So hopefully someone at home or that will be listening to the podcast later on uh, will have this experience also. And if you want to take another step and to, have, to create more choices and with more quality to deal and to cope with whatever is going on, especially in these times um, that we are living in, because they are very interesting uh, and challenging. Yeah, they are calling for skills and for uh, ways to move forward that uh, I will go out there and say pretty much everyone in the world uh, has not developed the skills to cope with and to, to, and to evolve and to move forward with uh, what's happening. 
So yeah, some people might have been uh, are learning faster. Some people are adjusting faster, and uh, you were working with that too. And, you and Florian and the people that Florian help uh, helps are doing that uh, at this moment. So with that, uh, Florian, do you have do you have any question, any last words that you like like to to end up? Hmm. The only thing I can say is, uh, this is a sentence I actually stole from John. I love it so much. It's, uh -huh. don't believe me anything. Try it for yourself. Mm. Because like, like most people that come to me, they know everything, but they don't know where to start because knowledge mm. is not wisdom. And really things only change when we apply those. And mm -hmm. I always say, don't say you don't like olives if you have never tried one. So I really urge you, if you want to create an impact in your life, try mm -hmm. those three-step model and really see how it shifts inside you, what changes, play around, have fun with it and find out if it really works for you or not. If it doesn't mm -hmm. work, you have always the chance to reach out to us. There's lots of other strategies we, we didn't have the time to cover we just a basic thing of it there's so much more but nothing helped as long as we don't practice them so don't believe me mm -hmm. anything just try it yeah go out there and uh, do something different experiment get the um, get the experience get the feedback get the learning and uh, figure out the, the next step either by yourself or with the help from someone that is nearby or you can reach out to. Um, thank you, thank you again. Uh, we'll be we'll be in touch uh, soon enough, and um, looking forward to meet you in person and, uh, whenever that is possible. I hope so. It was great fun. Thank you for inviting me, and thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, thank you. Have a great Bye -bye. evening. Good night and uh, enjoy your sleep. Have a good night rest and take good care of yourself, people. Take good care of yourselves. Bye. Bye-bye.